Hello, my name is Grzegorz Spytel. Welcome to the next episode of Storer Academy. Today I will show you how to migrate your backup from OVM-based infrastructure to OLVM-based infrastructure. So, today we'll be working with already configured Storer Backup and Recovery, uh, where I uh, connected my OVM host. Uh, I've done some backups of uh, virtual machines on this host, so let's go to the virtualization providers. Uh, here's my OVM uh, manager. And in instances, we can see uh, my VM inside uh, this OVM infrastructure. Uh, I already uh, added uh, a backup destination, which will be also reused uh, as a backup destination for my uh, OLVM backups. This is the local uh, file system uh, synthetic. Uh, so now I can start uh, by adding a new virtualization provider. This one uh, will be my OLVM based uh, host. So I need to create a new one. Uh, I need to choose the technology. This would be uh, Ovirt RHV Oracle Linux uh, VM. Uh, I just need to provide an address of my hypervisor manager, a username and a password. I can uh, choose among uh, different uh, uh, import export uh, methods. Uh, so I have a uh, access to disk image transfer, disk attachment to the proxy, SSH transfer and change block tracking. This time I will be using uh, this image transfer because uh, it doesn't need to have a uh, proxy VM installed inside my uh, all VM uh, infrastructure. I will save this configuration and I will be automatically asked to run inventory synchronization. During the synchronization we will be gathering all information about the configuration of uh, VMs, uh, storages, networks, and so on. As you can see in a work execution console, a new task appeared. So now we will be gathering information uh, from this uh, hypervisor manager. This task is almost completed. And if I go back to my uh, instances view, I will see new VMs, uh, not from the OVM, but uh, from the OLVM hypervisor manager. Uh, the next step that I need to take is to switch licenses uh, between those two hosts because uh, my, uh, my storage license uh, is available only for two hosts. So I need to uh, edit the details of my OVM manager. Uh, I need to uh, go to the hypervisors, choose two hypervisors that are connected to this hypervisor manager and I need to uh, change uh, license coverage. I need to uh, toggle off this switch, save the configuration and go back to the virtualization providers, edit my OLVM hypervisor manager, also go to the hypervisors and check uh, the license coverage for these two. So now uh, the license is connected to the OLVM host. I need to save it And now I'm ready to go. I can configure uh, new backups uh, for the VMs that resides on my uh, on my hypervisor of uh, all VM. So let's go to the backup SLA, create the new SLA. Let's call it all VM. And now I can choose to do the backups of uh, VMs manually or I can use uh, auto assignment mode. So in this case, I can uh, create the rules basing on the tags or uh, on the regular expressions. And in this case, if I enable this one, uh, the new VMs that will appear on my hypervisor after each uh, synchronization, because after the initial synchronization, we need to resynchronize with the uh, data source at least once a day. Uh, and if the new uh, machine appear that will meet these conditions, it would be automatically assigned to this policy. I don't need to do this. I can just uh, assign VMs uh, manually. So let's choose uh, the Alpine VM. And now I can create uh, the rule. Uh, the rule describes uh, where I'm going to store uh, my data. So I'm choosing my uh, backup destination. I can also create new schedules uh, for these backups. So let's call it uh, OLVM full. So this will be a full backup, uh, which will be run on Mondays at uh, 6 p.m. Let's save it. 
and I will also create another schedule. It would be LVM incremental, and I run it for for the rest of the days uh, during the week, also at uh, 6 p.m. I can save it right now. And I can save my uh, backup SLA. Okay, and now I can start doing my backups. Uh, for example, by uh, clicking the backup button uh, on the uh, backup SLA, SLA list. Uh, so in this case, it would trigger the backup for all the VMs uh, inside this policy. Or I can go back to the instances list and run a single uh, machine backup uh, by hitting the backup button next to the VM name. So let's start the backup right now. And new task will appear in the work execution console. Uh, of course, the first backup is always uh, the full one. Uh, and now we need to wait uh, to the task to be completed. So. Uh, now my backup task is uh, finished, uh, so I can go back to the instances list. Uh, we will see the green dot next to the name of this VM, uh, pointing that the backup is up to date uh, for this machine. Uh, I can click on the name to see the details, to see the backups that has been done uh, for this machine, to see the backup history, uh, eventually restore history if I done some restoration for this VM. Uh, I can see uh, the disk stop uh, here. I can do exclusion uh, of a, a disk if a machine have uh, more than one disk uh, and I don't want to do the backup of all the disks uh, from this machine. I can see uh, the schedules assigned uh, to this VM as well. Uh, I can run another backup task. Uh, I can do some adjustment. It can be full, it can be incremental. Uh, I can also do the restoration uh, for all VM I have. A, Instant restore available, uh, restore to the hypervisor manager and restore to the node. So in this case, we are restoring only the raw data back to the node uh, and mount button uh, where I can mount the data directly uh, from the backup uh, to our node and, uh, and find and restore the single uh, path, single file uh, from the backup uh, of this VM. Uh, but I still uh, has a uh, access to uh, VM from the previously backed up uh, hypervisor manager, some from my OVM infrastructure. This is the Alpine demo. Uh, of course, uh, I cannot do another backups because uh, I disconnected uh, the license uh, from this hypervisor manager, but I can still do the restoration. So uh, I can restore the road, road data back to the node and then uh, work with some uh, third party tool uh, with a, uh, data from this machine. And I can eventually do the mount action. So uh, I can uh, mount file system automatically. I can uh, choose to specify file system from this uh, VM to be mounted. Or I can even make a uh, iSCSI a share uh, and uh, mount it to the, uh, to the different machine as well. Uh, this time I will be mounting this uh, file system automatically to my node. And if I uh, start the mount action, also the new uh, task will appear in a work execution console. We can see the progress or uh, we can go to the mounted backups. And we, here we will also see the new entity, the new task running uh, and mounting the data uh, from this backup to our node. And I think that in a minute it would be available to see, to browse the details of this uh, VM file system. And now the mount operation is completed. If I refresh this page, I can uh, see the details of this mount. I can browse the file system uh, from this VM. And uh, here I can find uh, the whole directory, the whole uh, path. I can even uh, find a, a single file. I can choose it. I can download it uh, through the web UI or I can configure the remote upload uh, for another host. So I need to provide the host address, the destination path. I need to choose if it would be a, a SSH or a WinRM based uh, connection. And of course, I need to prepare the set of credentials of a user that has a right to write the data uh, to the destination path. Uh, and of course, uh, I can wait to uh, this mount to be unmounted automatically after uh, 24 hours. Oh, I can go back 
and unnoted uh, manually to save uh, resources of our node. As you can see, uh, even if you would like to migrate your VMs from OVM to OLVM, you can have your infrastructure still uh, protected and covered by only one license of store backup and recovery. Thank you for watching. I hope that I gave you a bunch of uh, useful information about the migration of your backup uh, from OVM to OLVM-based infrastructure. Stay tuned and watch uh, another episodes of Storer Academy.